Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. Got another video for you today. This is coming from the test server, part of episode 41, House of Legends. Uh, this is going to be the complete guide and everything you need to know about the new ally system. I will mention that since this is on test server, this is subject to change if you're watching this uh, later or weeks later, months later. Of course, I would have an update uh, if there are changes to the ally system eventually because there's definitely going to be some changes. But uh, I want this video to give like a full in-depth preview of the ally system so you guys know everything of where it stands currently. So there's going to be different parts of this video. Uh, the first part, I'm just going to be basically doing like a, a overview of like the, the menus, the passives, the abilities, talking about how they rank them up, what it looks like, stuff like that. Uh, that'll be in the timestamp. The second part of the video will be going into more in depth. So looking at the actual damage breakdown, like the catalyst breakdown, everything like that. So you'll be seeing my Excel, Excel spreadsheets for that. And then the final part of the video, uh, I will include the uh, opening mission. So the mission is kind of like just like the John Constantine mission that you had to go to complete to finish artifacts. So I'll show you where to get that and what that looks like just so you can see it. So, you know, I do apologize. This will definitely be a longer video, but I certainly want all the information in the in one place rather than you guys having to find everything. So, you know, it's going to be the typical, like, you know, long guide that I always do. But time uh, timestamps will be in the description as well as the comment section to be able to find the each relevant section. So let's get into it here. So as you can see right off the bat, in the bottom corner of my screen, you can see this little icon that is going to be uh, your ally icon. So right off the bat, I believe it keybinds to R, but I'm, I'm not sure on, on PS. But if you go to key bindings right away, so go to your settings, go to key bindings. Uh, it's going to be right, uh, where is it here? Uh, just look for my, I, I put it on my uh, control key. Where did it go? Where would it go? Right there, power combat ally. Sorry, I probably skipped that a few times. So yeah, go to key bindings, go to power combat ally. If you want to uh, keep buying that to something specific, that's what's going to be. Now, if we go into our main screen here, so just to uh, skip in, so when you are first starting out leveling your allies, or you don't have a lot of allies, or just one or few, uh, the thing you have to remember is that for one, it'll say support ally none here to equip, but if you don't have them ranked up, so even if you have multiple ones and they're not ranked up, you'll see that the support ability is locked. So it's locked behind a certain level. So for rare, it's going to be level 3. For epics, it's going to be level 4. And for legendaries, it's going to be level 4 and level 6 for their second support ability. Now, this is not a perfect system. This is not how it should be because you can't see what the support abilities are. So I, I can't even look at what the ability is to see what you're going to unlock because it's, it's locked. So you have no idea what the ability is unless you watch an Obsidian Shield video, but you have no idea what the ability is going to be unless you rank it up to that specific level, which takes a lot of ally XP, a lot of catalyst for, for something, for an ability that may be completely useless or not applicable to you. So that has to change. I'm sure that will change from the recording of this video. Uh, keep in mind, this is when Test Server is first released, and of course I'll do a second video with all the changes uh, before it hits live server, but just... Remember that um, this is what it looked like before and that it's locked. The takeaway is that you have to level up to get your support ability. Now, you'll be able to see your support ability because th there's no way the developers can leave it hidden like that. That's, I mean, that's crazy. You'd have to watch a YouTube video, go to the forums anytime you want to level uh, an ally. So that's, that's a bit restrictive for sure. Good for me, but restrictive. Um, so the main takeaway is that each ally, the support abilities, you do not gain right away. You have to lock, unlock those at later ranks. But you do get the combat ability right away. So each ally that you get, even if it's one star, with no XP into it, you will have a combat ability. And then just so you can see what the ally looks like, so I didn't show that previously, you can see it here. So ally favor, this is test server, so it's all maxed out. So if I put in, uh, I think it's like... 70,000 to rank this up. Something like that. And uh, I would fortify it normally. So that's all you do there. So it's a little bit different because it's not actually nth metal. It's actually in the currency tab. So you don't have uh, these in your actual inventory. It goes directly to your currency tab. But that's what that screen looks like because I couldn't show it before. So just wanted to highlight what it looks like when you have no allies or they're not leveled up to max to where the abilities are locked. 
So let's kind of break this down here. So in the menu itself, we have a combat ally and we have two support allies. What that means is that when we summon an ally, as you saw in that in that uh, summoning, then it's going to summon Zoom and he's actually going to deal the damage. So support allies have passive abilities. So you can see here when a supercharge is active, ally reduced uh, power cooldowns reduced, gain health and heal based on your precision. So that's just an example. So at all times you can have one combat ally and two passive allies. Now they're gonna be something different. So if I say, if I go to all allies here just quickly, you know, we've got um, calculator bot, you see the rare, and then I have a rock will be legendary, cyborg will be epic. So there's different rarities. Now the rarities will impact not only their performance, but it'll impact how many catalysts they cost. And also uh, the legendary ones have two support ones here. So you can see here's combat ability, support ability, support ability. And if I go back down to like Oracle Bot, which is rare, one combat ability, one support ability. So with your active team here, you'll see Fortify, that's gonna be a leveling screen. Swap, which means I can change it to a different ally. Abilities and bio. Bio is just going to talk about like what zoom is. I'm sure that's that's more of like the uh, you know in depth experience. Obviously, we know who these people are, but same thing. If 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 you're curious about it, then you can read into their quick little bio. So say for example for abilities, they're kind of hidden right here. So basically, it's the whirling gig spinning arms followed by an AOE explosion damage. And if we go to his passive, increases combat movement speed. So what I'll do is uh, I'll do a different breakdown where I just break down all of them in a row and put that as a timestamp. So this is going to be covering UI. Then I'll break down exactly what everything is uh, in that section. So this will be the active team. So say if you want to swap different damages, like say I want zoom active, you just click on swap. I'm assuming this will be similar on the PS menu, but at least this is PC. So, it, so I could swap any of my combat or support allies. So if I want to put uh, flash active, now flash is active. Same thing if I want to swap Aquaman to like one Diana. Then it gives me the option. Because everyone has one combat ability, it's automatically going to pre-fill it. But here, since these legendaries have two support allies, or two support abilities, I can choose which one. So upon a pull, enemy weapons are debuffed. Upon breakout, bonus might increase depending on the number of uh, nearby group members. So I can click on that one. And that'll be what takes this place. So all allies, these are all the current allies at the moment. They'll be on the screen, so I can click each one and kind of read their bio, equip them if I wanted to. So say, for example, I've wanted to equip Calculator Bot, equip ally. I can either equip them as support, or I can equip them as combat. So if I do support, it's going to say which one. Confirm support one, confirm support two, depending on which slot you want to take. And now he's in comp and now we support ally two slot. Up here on the right, this is going to be ally favor. So Ally Favor no longer drops as, as like Nth Metal as we like. So it's the same concept as Nth Metal, where uh, we have to kill allies and, and Ally Favor will drop off enemies, like similar to Nth Metal, but it's not going to take up space in our inventory. Ally Favor will be in your Currency tab. So going back to the Ally system, up here, these will be your Catalysts. Rare Catalysts, Epic Catalysts, Legendary Catalysts. So if we go back to my inventory here, so Rare Alliance, Epic Alliance, and Legendary Alliance. Now, with these catalysts, they only you can purchase them off the vendor, similar like we would uh, the catalyst for um, John Constantine. Or you can purchase them in the marketplace. Right now, as of the recording of this video, these Rare Alliance catalysts do not drop uh, anywhere in content. You can only purchase them on the vendor, so dark matter, that's something different. That's for, that's for the OP item. But uh, uh, the, the alliance, these catalysts can only be dropped off the vendor. So you can see here, eight source marks, 15, and there's no cost on legendary, but I'm sure it'll be something similar to what the uh, Paradox time was in the uh, John Constantine vendor. So to give you an example of what the Fortify screen looks like. So if you want to Fortify, You'd put in your ally favor. I know this doesn't help because I already put my ally favor in, but uh, ally favor would be showing up on this side. Do I have any ones that require XP? Yeah, it would have been uh, would have been pretty smart, Obsidian, to do that before recording the video. But nonetheless, you guys know what the fortify screen looks like. <laughs> it's going to come up right here. Basically, you just put the ally favor in like you would normally uh, nth metal, and then there's there's no there's no worry about seals. It's a hundred percent breakthrough chance. 
You don't have to worry about that. Every single rank is 100% breakthrough. So once you get enough ally favor, so for example here, ally favor, 300,000, that's what's in there. You technically only need 299,000, but uh, I have 300,000, so you can't over-level allies. Same thing, once you have your catalyst, breakthrough. And now maximum ally rank achieved and unload. So similar, very similar to how you would level an artifact, pretty much exactly the same, except that it's 100% breakthrough chance. So I think that pretty much covers it with, um, I haven't done the abilities yet, but I'll do that in a moment. So same thing, all allies, combat support. You can view each one here and their, and their uh, support abilities. So right now we have three legendaries and Baraka Man, Queen Diana, and Flashpoint Batman. You'll see there level 10. So that's how many levels it takes in terms of XP and Catalyst, which I'll show in my breakdown of my Excel sheets. So don't worry about that. Uh, I'll show you exactly how much uh, ally favor you need, as well as like what, what each rank requires, as well as how many Catalysts and total Catalysts. And then the rare ones will have level five. And we have uh, three, uh, three rares, Calculator Bot, House of Legends Bot, Oracle Bot. And then we have three epics, which is going to be Cyborg, that'd be level eight, or Cyborg, Flash, and Professor Zoom. So that is a walkthrough of the actual UI menu. Now let's touch on the actual abilities of each of the allies. Okay, we have Calculator Bot, the rare. So Comet ability, Assertion Assault, deals damage over time to enemies in the red ground target. Support ability will be roll aid. Heals a small amount on roll. Uh, that'll have to actually test if it is a roll. The way it was described to me is that every 20 to 30 seconds it can proc a heal on yourself uh, while you're taking damage. So if you're taking, if you're on the sparring target with amulet, that's not going to count because it's it's damage you're doing to yourself. It has to be actually something uh, attacking you. But uh, I'll have to I'll have to see if it's actually a roll. So <laughs> TDB on that one. Uh, some of these passive abilities are a bit. Um, awkward to test and explain the way they're worded but we'll get to his uh, common ability here as you can see each time that the uh, icon will change with uh, which one you actually are Overclocked and super cooled. there we go once again pay no attention to the damage i'll have that uh, tested in the spreadsheets So, looking at the House of Legends bot, combat ability is going to be Shock Jock, Electrical Stun Effect Single Target. And if we go to its passive ability, get power back from stunning enemy NPC. So this will be more geared towards controllers, tanks, but even there's uh, any adds that are zero will power is going to be able to stun them as well. So you just get a massive uh, burst of power back. So, looking at its combat ability. And there's the House Legends bot. Looking at Oracle bot, combat ability, wrist rockets, fires rockets barrage at single target. And the passive ability slowly repairs your gear over time. So if you have broken gear, then it's going to uh, repair that back to 100% durability. Much more easier to explain that passive ability than some of the others. And then combat ability. And there's Oracle. So looking at Cyborg, Cyborg's combat ability is going to be Power Cord. Sonic Projectile does AoE line of sight damage. And what I mean by that is basically it's like a bowling ball. It's like a straight pin, which you'll see. So it's hard to kind of tell in single target, but say if the eight sparring targets will spread out, it's only going to hit like a direct line. And if you go to his support ability, receive bonus to passive power recovery rate when your base generators are above 50%. And base generators, what that means or what that is referring to is in your base, you have those generator mods 
Uh, not the generator mods, but same thing. Tactical mods, orbital spikes, henchmen, sidekicks. That generator that you have to put source marks into, if that is above 50%, then you get that passive bonus. So, I mean, most people should have theirs maxed out anyway because it doesn't take that many source marks. I think they last for like 60 days too, so you shouldn't have an issue having that uh, uh, constant uptime. So, to show you what his common ability looks like, And he's gone. So the common theme is that all allies are usually out for less than six seconds for the combat abilities. Okay, so giving an uh, intro on the flash. The flash's abilities, combat abilities, can be tornado does corner damage, which we'll show here. Don't read too much into the damage. That'll be all tested on my Excel shot on Excel sheets. This is just kind of a preview of what the actual ally will do. So going back into the menu, his support ability reduces time between when you're in combat and return to normal travel speed. So what that means is that when you're in combat, uh, you move slower um, if you're engaged and targeted an enemy. So this basically will reduce the time between when you're actually back to normal travel speed. So basically you just get back into normal move mode faster when it works. So taking a look at Professor Zoom, combat ability is going to be Whirly Gig, spinning attack pulls enemies followed by AOE explosion damage. And if we go to his support ability, Hot foot increases non-combat movement speed. So it just means that when you aren't in combat, uh, you run faster, essentially. So it doesn't help when you're actually in combat, which is most of the time in content, but it's say if you're running around open world or racing someone on a bridge, uh, you're going to be faster in non-combat movement speed. So taking a look at uh, what Whirly Gig is going to do. Uh, we'll note as of currently him pulling those NPCs will also pull them away from the tank and if the tank pulls the ads back you'll miss the damage because it's going to pull the NPCs out of that tornado so that's something to be mindful of but uh, that is uh, what flash will look like oh, sorry what prevents zoom will look like okay now the legendary ones are a little bit different the combat abilities are still the same but they have two passives now so combat ability, crime alley assault, fires guns for single target damage, followed by grenades for AOE damage. Now if you look at the passives, there's two. So you can only have one at a time. So for example, like I said before in my intro one, if I go to uh, my support ones and then swap this for Batman, I have to pick which one, but for example now if I go to try to put them on my second one, if I go swap Batman and put them on my two one, it's going to overwrite. So I can't have Flashpoint Batman twice. You have to choose which one of his uh, passives, but it just it's just a bonus that you get two passives to choose from instead of just being stuck with one. So going back to his passives, Solo Detective. So defense increases when you are solo. And Combat um, Sutar. Gain health, then heal based on your position. So once again, I'll, I'll cover all the passive ability testing on a different timestamp. This is just basically just to show off the uh, the allies and what they do and what they look like. So let's put him back on combat. You're mine. And he's gone. So the Queen Diana. Queen Diana is a little bit different. This one is more geared towards tanks. So combat ability, there is no damage component to it. It just taunts enemies. And if we look at her passives, take that. Upon pull, enemy weapons are debuffed. May apply to bosses. Depends. You can't really pull any bosses, so uh, it should just be regular NPCs. And then don't weaken. Upon breakout, bonus might increases depending on number of nearby group members. So that'll be handy for Earth Battle Tanks, Bammy Jackhammer. But I'll show you at least what uh, the Command Presence does. I will bring the truth from you. We'll pound you to death. 
and I'll show that uh, when I test the passives and show those off I'll, I'll show what that looks like in actual combat too this brings us to Emperor Aquaman so combat ability release the Kraken Kraken tentacle stun and damage enemy in AoE and it's two passives Seaside restart so when it, when a supercharge is used ally active power is cooldown is reduced and hear my call summon pet gets or summon pets get temporary damage increase so as a little side note you can see how broken those two passives are compared to all the other ones you've seen so far <laughs> but uh, you know alas this is a early version of test hopefully these get uh, taken care of or there'd be no other reason to run any other passive besides one of Aquaman, Emperor Aquaman's. But, showing release the Kraken. We'll turn the seas okay, so now to the actual spreadsheet stuff, which uh, I'm sure you guys are all waiting for. But first I want to touch on the, the actual XP and the Catalyst break, uh, breakdown, and then we'll get into the actual damage. Uh, so basically here, leveling up uh, a rare ally, which would be the blue ones. 8,500 XP total, 7 Catalysts, all just the rare alliance. You don't need any epic or legendary. And then technically, uh, at least what it says in the description is that epic alliance is 8 source marks. So to level up the epic ones, the purple, that'd be like Flash, Zoom, Cyborg. Uh, it's going to be 75,600 and total ally favor XP required. 68 catalysts, so you can really see the jump in the catalyst uh, the requirements and then uh, for the epic alliance ones it's 15 source marks so at least we don't need any legendary it's just epic and uh, rare but that's still that's still a hefty chunk of catalyst to be able to do that by comparison you'll see here which i'll touch on the summary but uh, to level an artifact from 0 to 200 is 137 catalysts total and about 1,382 source marks. And then how these stack up against those prices are the the uh, epic ones are eight source marks for seven, so it's only plus one, so that's not too bad. They're about the same. Uh, the cost here, though, on the epic alliance, they're 15 source marks each, and, and the quantum field energies are only 10, so that's an increase of five. Uh, we don't. There is no price on the legendaries yet. Uh, that just it's just blank. It doesn't say a source mark cost. So. I'm assuming we can purchase it with source marks on the vendor because it's they're not going to drop in content. And if they were purchased purchasable only by the marketplace, that'd be completely <laughs> pay to win and broken. So I'm assuming they just haven't added the source mark cost yet. But if it kind of follows the same pattern, we're probably looking at like 20, 25 source marks uh, for the legendary cost. So, I mean, you do the math on this one, 67 times 20, that's <laughs> Can add up real quick and then 113 times 8 and 92 times 15. So <clears throat> you can really see the exponential increase in cost in the catalyst, and that's that's my concern so far. I mean, the XP system you get like 9,000 XP, 75,000, 300,000, same thing, it's, it's like exponentially increasing in terms of XP. and the, we know they drop like nth metal, but there's no like there's not gonna be an ally cachet or stuff like that that we're gonna get. I mean, we'll have to see how much bonus ally we get, uh, favor we get from being a membership and like the daily log rewards. So that, I mean, it's still I'm not sh looking at this right now. It seems pretty crazy in terms of the XP levels, but we don't know how much we can actually earn in content. So that's that's still the question mark right now. But especially with the legendary ones, 272 catalysts. You know, compared to, you, you all know how much of an issue it is to get artifact catalyst to to level up uh, zero to two hundred, which is only one hundred and thirty seven, and we need two hundred and seventy two. So if you did all the math on the source marks and everything, it's like three thousand source marks. It, it you know potentially you know between three thousand thirty one hundred source marks, just to rank up one legendary ally, and at three thousand source marks. You know, that's 300 raids you got to run. I mean, Fosteria yeah, gives 10 source marks as a reward, but I mean, you got to run it 300 times to be able to, <laughs> to get that many catalysts. So that's that's my concern. the The numbers are pretty pretty damning right now, but we'll have to see how they offset. 
So in summary wise, so it's a 789% increase to go from rare to legendary in terms of the uh, XP that's required. To go from epic to legendary, it's a 295% increase. And to go from uh, 68 catalysts, the epic requirements, to go to legendary, 272, it's a 300% increase. And the other weird thing I found, I, I thought it like, you know, when you level an artifact, it's the, it's the same level. So, you know, a rare one has level 1 through 5, epic has 1 through 8, and legendary is 1 through 10. So you would think that 1 through 5 would be the same for both, and that 1 through 8 would be the same for both. But it's not. Like, it's not like an artifact. They're completely different. So it's a 33% increase from going from the rare alliance on epic to the rare alliance 1 through 8 on legendary. And it's a 45% increase in catalyst to go from the epic alliance on uh, on epic ally to epic alliance on legendary. The same levels. So it's it's not the same catalyst cost across all levels. They've also scaled up and increased how many catalysts you need. So right now, I mean, XP we know we get from drops and stuff like that. But catalysts, there's only two ways to buy it. The marketplace or, you know, from the vendor. And those are some hefty source mark costs. So that's interesting. We'll see how that plays out. Oh, and the other thing, too, is the main thing um, on, on Artifact Nth Metal, it can crit. So you have the chance to, to save that, but they took away that feature. So Ally Favor cannot crit. So it's it's a, it's a one-to-one. So you have no chance to crit and, and uh, you know skip some source marks or, or um, skip some XP, etc. So to the damage components, this is, the, uh, this is what I'm sure most of you are wanting to see, actually, how they perform. So look at the rares first. So there's one through five. This is tested on the five targets in, in the uh, new House of Legends. There are some single target base, so that's why there's there's going to be five targets, one targets for that. Uh, as you can see here, through the star level, so the base damage is about 43k, 47k, 43. So the base damage is pretty similar, and how they rank up is pretty similar too. 225, 236, 228. So even the damage is pretty split evenly from single target damage to AOE damage here with Calculator Bot, how they go. So as you can see here, the, the damage percentage is pretty much follow the same thing. So 50%, you know, or basically 100% uh, increase in damage from start from level 1 to 2. And it's like 50, 30, 20, 50, 30, 20, 50, 30, 20 in that range. So the, the rares, I would say they're in a good spot. I mean, it's only 9,000 XP and you get, you know, 220k damage, single target. I mean, this not may not be as necessary, depending if you want the... Uh, um, the abilities leveled up, the passives, which I'll touch on after the damage. Or you get calculator bot, nice little AOE, simple damage, it's 225. So, I mean, compare that to like a pet. I mean, a pet damage in 60 seconds would give you like 750k damage. Uh, and an ally gives you, a, or a rare ally gives you 225. So that, that seems okay. It doesn't seem like too much of an investment in XP or uh, Catalyst. For like you know substandard damage, it's still gonna be less than like robot psychic or less than um, a henchman. It's probably pretty similar to henchman damage if you think of it like that. So we go to epics. Epics are a bit weird. So I mean you saw the increase. So so we're looking from nine thousand technically to like seventy five hundred. So it's a, it's a still a fairly big increase. And we've got uh, Cyborg. Cyborg is really weird with how his projectile is based. So it's it's completely line sight projectile. So think of it like throw, like a, like tossing a bowling ball. So anything the bowling ball hits will take some AOE damage, but it's like a very like completely straight. So I mean, you can easily miss an ad if it's like five feet to the left or five feet to the right, etc. So it's it's very easy to miss damage and, and miss hits on Cyborg. They tend to they tend to scale evenly, but it's. It's really awkward positioning wise for Cyborg. Uh, if your tank pulls ads or like the, the ads, you know, move or anything like that, you know, actually using this in combat and not just on a stationary sparring target. If, I mean, if it's hard to use on a stationary sparring target, imagine how hard it is going to be actually in a raid. So Zoom right now, Zoom is the clearly best. Like, it's not even like up for debate. I mean, it's not even like remotely up for debate. I mean, Zoom probably does more damage than, like, all the other allies combined. Even the legendaries. So, I mean, obviously that's a bit overtuned. 
So level one is 300K. So, I mean, so that's the funny part too. It's like a maxed out cyborg, level eight maxed out cyborg, 7,500 XP is the base damage of zoom. What? <laughs> I, I don't understand that scaling. Um, <laughs> even, even flash. So I, I know flash was overperforming before, but then he got kind of adjusted, but uh, I mean, we're, we're looking at a maxed out, uh, or a level one zoom, like no XP level one. You just, you got zoom drop. You just attached them and just equipped them level one, no XP into him. He's doing 300 K base damage, which is almost the same as a max cyborg and more than a maxed flash for the same number of hits, same targets, same number of hits. <clears throat> Sorry. The uh, same combat time, just up to 1.2 mil. So it's doing a million more damage than flash. So obviously that's, that's going to change, but, uh, that's, that scaling is kind of funny. Uh, zoom, basically it's a pull on CC. So it basically spawns. He's going to yank the ads towards him and then do like an AOE tornado effect. Like you saw in the, in the preview, uh, the tank that can interfere with the tank. Cause it can yank ads off the tank and then the tank's going to pull them back and kind of fight back and forth. So that can be somewhat annoying. You're going to have to kind of wait for the tank to pull the ads and then summon zoom rather than before. <laughs> Flash is a ranged uh, cone AOE, so not only that, it's it's even harder to use Flash than Zoom. Zoom is really easy to use. He just he teleports to the ads, does a tornado, and pulls them. You know, it's it's hard to miss with Zoom. You you would have to have an external force like a tank or something pulling it. Where like Cyborg, you can easily mess up the mess up positioning. Flash, you can easily mess up positioning because of how tight that uh, conic damage is. So. That's why I think it almost should be like reversed. Like zoom, zoom, zoom should be much lower, like, you know, 60 to 200 K instead of anything, anything else, what it is. Cause it's zoom is the easiest to use. So for the legendaries, they're a little bit awkward because legendaries, they seem like they're geared more towards their passives and having the two passive abilities than actual damage. So you saw the difference. I mean, it, you know, 295% increase in XP, you know, huge increase in catalyst, a 300% increase in catalyst. So like all the effort it takes to level up a legendary and its damage is, is pretty much the same as like cyborg or less, or at least for, for Batman. Batman does a, a single target pistol burst and then does those grenades. So the grenades technically could hit more targets or they can miss targets. Uh, just depends on the ads and how they're grouped. So, Flashpoint Batman has a bit more potential for higher damage, but I mean the same thing. I mean, you're you're dumping in all those catalysts and everything else to get only like 400k damage, where Cyborg is already pushing that, and it's going to be, you know, like a fraction of the cost of level. So that's why I can't really understand. I understand that these legendaries have two passives, but at the same time, you can't use both passives. So if, if Flashpoint Batman had two really good passives, you wanted to use both, you can't. You still got to pick one. It's just the advantage that you get the choice between one or two. But at least with Flashpoint Batman, one of the passives is like an increase uh, in defense and solo content. I mean, that's that's inconsequential. I mean, it, that's not going to impact anything. Who cares? <laughs> so so it's already one passive of Flashpoint Batman's that you're, you're putting all this XP into it's already really not worth it because it's it's not going to be beneficial at all, especially not in a raid or content. It's only going to be for like solo open world content where at that point you can take shields and soders and whatever you want. Like it, it's not hard to uh, survive in solo content. You'd want it for like an alert when you don't have a healer or tank or, you know, in a raid or something like that, but that it won't apply. It's only for solo content. So it, it kind of like, you know, it's self-defeating almost. So that's why I... Honestly, it's more that we have to know or find out what the developers want out of this system. And that's, I guess, that's the question. Because, like I said before, like if they want to gear the legendaries t completely towards their passives, that's fine. But you can't have, unless the passives are like completely game breaking, it doesn't warrant 300k XP and like 272 catalysts to rank up. So if the damage was like, you know, zoom level damage, then that makes sense. Cause it's like, okay, I have great base damage and I have great passives. So I, I have to make the choice between using it as a passive or a damage ability, but we don't have that. We have low base damage and then kind of suspect passives. Uh, Queen Diana is a more of a tank pet or not pet pet, but uh, ally. 
So Queen Diana will summon the shield. It reflects some damage back. The, the reflected damage is based on the star level. And then it's got the, the tank passes basically when it pulls an ad and stuff. But Queen Diana itself does no damage. Uh, the reflected damage doesn't it will, obviously won't kill Diana because she can't be targetable. And then uh, Emperor Aquaman. Aquaman, this one, it's it's actually really, it's a massive AoE. I mean, if you're standing in the uh, middle of the House of Legends, it'll hit like two separate sets of five uh, adds. It's, the radius on it is huge. It's probably at the, the render distance, like, you know, Celestial Healing. So it's a really nice stun. So if you're a DPS, no matter what, it's going to stun enemies. So if you're any role, it's going to stun, which is kind of handy. But, I mean, the same thing, the base damage is completely inconsequential. I mean, a maxed out Emperor Aquaman's 258k damage. I mean, once again, you're investing all that into it, only for 258k damage. However, the, the passives for Aquaman, like you saw, are are really powerful. So, I mean, I don't think anyone's going to actually be using Emperor Aquaman for the damage. They're going to be using it for the passives. But, I mean, at the same time, it's hard to justify that. <laughs> I mean, the passives are great, but like, are the passives worth, like, you know, a two, three, four hundred dollar investment or whatever these are going to cost in, in terms of if you're leveling it up uh, through the marketplace or in the, the time invested in game running like hundreds of raids to be able to get the source marks to pay for these catalysts. Are the passives that strong? So I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of an awkward spot. It's like these feel weaker compared to their time investment, but it's almost like. You, you can't make them OP because that's just ridiculous. You can't, if you make all the allies, you know, do base damage a million or whatever, that's just going to be completely overbalanced. But at the same time, I, I really feel like these catalysts, either the XP or the catalyst requirements have to come way down because it's, it's not worth that much of an investment. Touching on the single target, I didn't do like a full breakdown for the single target because I know these numbers are pretty much subject to change. Um, all the rares are pretty much the same, 224, 236, 228. Uh, even zoom and flash are pretty much the same. 243, 243. Black man was 234. Emperor uh, Aquaman was 258. So, I mean, Cyborg was the clear winner because his projectiles, when they hit single target, they do about 100k each damage, each hit. So, three hits, 300k damage. So, I mean, you can sometimes get three or four hits, sometimes five. I mean, it all depends on your positioning and how weird the target is, but I found that in testing. But, a uh, th- cyborg is definitely going to be the best for single target. That's for sure. I mean, there's there's no question in that. Uh, Zoom and, and flash are more geared towards AOE. Same thing with Aquaman. And Batman doesn't have enough. The pistol shots don't do enough damage. They're like twenty k ticks. But uh, cyborg, you know, that happens in, in basically one second. You got four hundred k damage because of how the projectiles hit and line up on the target. So that's cyborg is definitely going to be the single target winner. I don't see anything else uh, beating that or coming close to it. But AOE damage is pretty much all similar except for Zoom. So that's the breakdown here. Let's uh, let's jump over and uh, kind of briefly look over the passives here. But uh, I mean, it's it's hard to take a, get a takeaway here because I mean the system's so new. But I just don't know what kind of direction they want to take with it. Right now, if they right now it's kind of basic. Like the, none of these are game breaking. Some of the passives can be game break, not game breaking, but like you know balance breaking or whatever you want to call that because right now like a uh if you summon like a father box or mother box it's going to do about 700k damage in over 60 seconds even a turret pet a turret pet will do 550k damage in 10 seconds which is the same cooldown like these cooldowns i guess i should kind of put that in there as well so cooldown is 120 seconds that would be kind of helpful for you guys to know uh same thing so despite in combat same thing um I'm, I noticed it with Aquaman too. So if you summon it and you're in combat, but you're too far away, he just sits there and does nothing. And then uh, Flashpoint Batman's pistol attack can be kind of weird. It, it looks like it can be blocked by NPCs. A, a player's quiz blocked the pistol damage. So it's really hard to duplicate because of how everything moves. But it looks like the, the uh, projectiles can be blocked. And the cooldown is 120 seconds. And the cooldown, that's the exact same cooldown as a pet trinket. It's like I said before, like a, a turret pet will do 550k damage in 10 seconds. And we're investing a crazy amount of, of time and money and resources into allies that do less damage in five seconds, except for you know some outliers. So right now, a lot of it is 
we're paying for the passive abilities, which are nice. There's some nice passive abilities, but once again, are, are they worth that much? I mean, the rare is sure that's that's completely realistic. It's only like seven catalysts and nine thousand XP, so I mean that's really easy to get, and you could work towards the epics. But I mean, right now I don't feel like any of these are worth it. the The Aquaman one is is definitely uh, worth it right now, but like I said before, that's subject to change, and right now it's broken too, which I'll show eventually in the passes in my next section of the video here. So let's let's stop talking about this and let's let's jump to the passives, so you guys can get like a full kind of overview. Okay, so the next one we're going to test is Calculator Bot. Roll Aid, so it heals small amount on a roll. So I do have Tumbling Mastery on. Hopefully that doesn't uh, impact it too much. Need them to attack me a bit more. I don't have anything else that's going to heal. Boss Adapter, um, Accelerated Berserk, Penetrating Strikes, Max Damage, Head Mod, like there's nothing. I have no self-healing ability at all. Leg mod too, there's nothing in legs. So it does seem to have either an internal cooldown or something has to set it up. Like do I have to dodge damage for it to apply? No. Oh, it just happened again there. So seems to be not the most consistent thing. I mean, I'm definitely dodging some of their attacks here. I could do the full tumbling mastery. Doesn't seem to proc it any faster. So, at least with this one, that uh, I mean, it does proc the 7k heal, 7k heal against 144,000 health. But uh, getting it to proc consistently would seem to be the issue. So they might want to speed that up. Because, I mean, you can spam roll. I mean, I guess if I sit here for... I don't know, I'm going to die anyway. So, I mean, <laughs> there's there's the, uh, the calculator bot. Okay, so the first one we're going to look at is the uh, Oracle bot. So Oracle Bot's support ability, Tinker, slowly repairs your gear over time. So let's uh, equip ally. Supports. Right now my gear is currently durability 66, 69. And as you can see, it's going to be applied as my active support ally. And we'll take a look here. What I'll do is I'll probably kind of speed up the footage and put like a, and just let you know like a timer. I have a rough idea how long it takes to repair the gear. So I mean, even as we've been watching, what's that in the seventies now? Yep. Yeah. So it's going to buy like one or two durability each time. You hear the sound effect each time, though. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that with the audio, the game audio, but I'm hearing the uh, like gear, like equip gear uh, sound effect each time. But as you can see, you're 72, 72, 74. And it's been like less than three seconds. Jump back into it, see how it's going. So, as you can see now, everything in my gear was all broken before. And now it's back up to 75% durability. So, I mean, that's that's a really straightforward, easy passive to understand. My gear, it wasn't broken, but I mean, it was all like 60 durability. And now it's in the span of how long this has been. A minute, if that. And it's already almost back up to 80. So... Very straightforward. I mean, it'll have its uses, but I mean, now that free to play and premium have a limited cash cap, they don't have to worry about really repairing. I mean, this feature would have been great in the past because it would save the money, but 
now there's no cash cap anymore so they can purchase you know repair the gear whatever they want so i mean it's a useful ability but it's not useful at the same time but that's the uh, oracle ball passive there so looking at our next ally for the passive is going to be the house of legends bot power thief so get a power back when stunning an enemy npc once again straight pretty straightforward shouldn't have a problem showing that off so for example uh, even though I'm DPS stance, Tesla Ball is going to stun, or it should stun, so I'm just going to dump a bunch of power. We'll get in uh, combat first. Dump a bunch of power, stun him, and you saw the massive power return. <laughs> so once again, we'll drain all this power, stun him again. Oh, we need Tesla to actually stun probably cool down on it there we go 144,000 so immediately you get your entire bar filled immediately just by stunning them so that's that's excessive uh, we don't we don't need the power turn like that because controllers will never run out of power which is you know not realistic because I mean the healers could run that there's not even a point of a controller anymore at that point like why why run a controller when you can just stun an NPC like a healers can stun too with like consumes all you know nature's got encasements and stuff so I mean there's power sets that can stun or take a stun ability so you would never need a, a tank would never need a troll <laughs> there's DPS abilities that'll stun too if they got zero willpower so and even even as controller you could do claw controller spec like all of it and no power and then you could have power return unlimited because you can just fill your entire bar every time you stun something. So that, that pa I mean, it's, it's a nice passive. It's just, it can't be like your entire power bar. <laughs> that's gotta be, uh, that's gotta be toned down a bit. But, uh, I mean, it's an interesting passive, especially for like, uh, obviously controlling, but if you're like doing open world content with like light or mental or, or, um, atomic stuff like that, you're going to stun. And then at least you get some power back much more than you would like from your regular uh, passive power return but that's just massive <laughs> a little bit toned down but there's the uh, there's the uh, house of legends passive so for the next dial it's a little bit awkward here so we're going to be looking at uh, cyborg who's up here so receive bonus to passive power recovery rate when base generators are above 50 percent now, after this, I'll show you what the base generators are. It's just those ones where you upgrade your henchmen, sidekicks, overstrike, as long as that's above 50%. But to, to figure the passive out, so let's attack this dude. Drain, just put a shield up, and we'll like wander around. And you can see how fast the regen's going. Like, it's still fairly at a slow pace. So pretty much like the entire cooldown of, of Flux it took to regen power. And you know, Flux is 18 seconds. So it took 18 seconds to fill the power bar of using the first five powers basically. So let's uh I don't really want to die, but he's gonna kill me. So let's just go up here for a sec. Douchebag. Don't ground me. There we go. So let's uh, swap him, and let's see how long it takes. It oh, actually that would not be a good ally to put. We'll do this one. So we're full. We got the prince, five powers, and then we'll see if it comes up with the uh, the cooldown flux or not, or if it's gonna be about the same time. And it appears to be pretty much the exact same time. I, I mean, it got helped a little bit from my passive from what uh, weapons expert, but I mean that was pretty much 18 seconds. It, it took 18 seconds to fill the powerball after using five powers before and after. So I don't see a passive regen rate increase with or without, because it should just be your passive power recovery. So, I mean, it's, it's one of two ways. Either it's going to show up in your power in, and you would see that as, as a blue power tick, because that's power you're receiving. But it's it's showing bonus to passive power recovery. Passive power recovery is going to be your personal regen, like your weapons expert, your hybrid, or, or your superpower spec. 
and that's that's your basically that's your passive regen and there was no increase at all it was the exact same rate and if I start to do like you know weapon attacks uh, then I'm gonna have the extra power return from that because of my spec so and even with weapon expert you have 25 percent minus power regeneration so it should have should have increased from there so that that's another one i got to chalk up into it not working it, it should be clear like my even even if i was incorrect with what the generator mod was or not i keep saying generator mod but the generators all mine are maxed you know my generator mods are maxed my power core is maxed uh the other one's maxed in terms of source marks so everything's above well above 50 percent so that that shouldn't be an issue having that satisfy that criteria but I'm not getting any kind of passive increase in my power regen. And there's no really, you can't test this on the sparring targets because they're going to give you power return. You have to test it pretty much like this. And I've, the variables are pretty much the exact same. I just clipped all five powers and waited for flux to come off cooldown both times. And, was, and they pretty much lined up, like give or take a few, a couple seconds. But if this is going to be a, a bonus passive, it's going to be more than worth a couple seconds of uh, regen return. I should have regen a lot quicker, but <clears throat> I didn't. So I'm going to chalk that up into the not working category, just like a bunch of others. So for the next passive uh, flash, I'm not even going to attempt to show you this passive. You'll just have to kind of read it and figure it out on your own. Uh, reduces time between when you are in combat and return to normal travel speed. Now this fundamentally doesn't make sense to me because if you are in combat, it's because something has targeted you. Either it's a boss or an NPC that you didn't kill or a sparring target. You know, if I, if an enemy is tags me and I don't kill it, it still has, you know, either threat to me or still whatever. Like, it's not going to expire until I kill him. I mean, that's, that's how it always is. That's how it works. So, same thing. If I tag a sparring target and I walk, like, you know, 10 feet away and just sit there, it's never going to drop. I'm going to be in combat the entire time. So I don't physically understand how this works unless it means that when that ad dies, how fast you go from combat to non-combat. But I mean, you already you already get out of combat like almost instantly when, when something drops. So if you kill an ad and you were in combat, you kill it. And you, within like a couple seconds, if that, you're, you're out of combat. So I really don't understand A, what they're going for with this and B, how it even works and see if it would even matter in, in actual <laughs> realistic because once again in a raid in a boss fight you're not going to get you're not going to drop out of combat i mean it, there's going to be a boss fight it's going to be ads you know there's you're going to be in combat the entire time so i mean yes getting out of combat you could change your switch your loadout quickly or regen health a bit faster but at the same time I wouldn't even begin really to know how to test this without being like spending way too much time on it for the amount of effort that it's going to take. So it's supposed to reduce travel through time between your combat and return to normal. I know what that means. I know what like a uh, I know what that concept is, and I'm sure you guys do as well. But practicality or, or actual in use, I'm not sure how that's actually going to apply, and I haven't seen anyone else figure it out either in terms of their testing. So we're going to leave it at that. We're going to chalk it up to uh, question mark. So it's not broken. It could be working. Just TBD question mark. So looking into uh, Zoom's passive. Doesn't appear to be working. So Zoom increases non-combat movement speed. So I've tried this with like uh, like fast movement and regular movement. So it should be easy to tell in regular movement because fast movement can be a little bit hit or miss sometimes in terms of my timing. But, you know, I've got Zoom equipped. I'm just going to start running. And then we'll basically time itself from to get from the back of that pillar to the back of the next pillar. And this is with Zoom equipped. And I mean, once again, not exact science, but I'll basically stop like right there. That's just sent on pretty much where exactly where we're. And then now we're going to put another ally on. Doesn't matter, cyborg. Same thing, we'll run just beyond, run back. And in my test, they're both around, like 
16, you know, point three zero seconds, roughly, sixteen point three five. And we'll stop like right there. So, timing-wise, it it seemed to make sense. Like, it seems to be both. Like, it doesn't seem to be working. Because I'm not sure anywhere else how to approach that. Because I mean, the same thing. I can do it like fast movement. So, just kind of line myself up here. So there, oh. basically we'll do we'll do from like the front there to the front of this pillar. And that's that was without zoom equipped or the sorry that was zoom. And same thing we'll swap to like it doesn't matter. Aquaman. Same thing. I'll start. Uh, I'll start my stopwatch when I get to there. To me, these feel like the exact same times. So that's how it's supposed to work. It's supposed to be non-combat speed increase. So I've tried fast movement. I've tried regular uh, running, and timing-wise, they worked out to be pretty much the exact same. So it would appear this passive isn't working. I mean, you'll find that's going to be a common theme with some of the other passives, but I, I don't see any other, under, other way to test this. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory what it, what uh, what the actual ability is. You know, it shouldn't be that difficult to figure out. Increases non-combat movement speed. I mean, the whole point is it should be in combat, because I mean, even e even if you're super speed, you can you can still do the trick. And, well, not even trick, but just like the the fast movement in and out method like that i mean that's what players are going to do in raids anyway and that's not oh you're going to be in combat so that won't even affect it so it's, i mean it's literally pointless for super speed if the passive was even working but there's there's zoom or what zoom should be eventually so for the next ally passive we're going to be looking at command uh emperor Aquaman. now i'll say right now here my call the summon pets get temporary increase, uh, temporary damage increase. Um, I can't get that to work. It doesn't work on Robot Sidekick. Uh, it didn't work on Gadget Suppressor Turret. It didn't work on Father Box. It didn't work on the Brainiac Turret. So I'm not sure if it's just broken or maybe it, it needs to be like Earth's Crystal or Sorcery's Fury, but that wouldn't make any sense. Um, even if it was going to be like a temporary proc or there's like an internal cooldown, it doesn't matter. Father Box is out for 60 seconds. So there would have been a difference in the parse with it with uh, Aquaman equipped or with that, without equipped. So not that anyone would be using it really that, uh, that one over the uh, Seaside Restart, but still, they, it, it should, I mean, it makes, temp it makes sense. Uh, I mean, it should be as soon as you summon a pet, uh, different intervals or different internal cooldowns, like every 30 seconds, every 20 seconds, something like that. Uh, it's going to increase pet damage, just like Source Shard would, with some kind of increase. But the uh, it's not described on the forms what it should be. It just, the same thing, it just pretty much says the same thing, just a, a pet damage increase. But not that uh, not that I can see. So that one's kind of chalked right now. But Seaside Restart that definitely works. So I'll show you that. That's when a supercharge is used. Ally active power cooldown is reduced. So we're going to equip. See side restart. So uh, it's it's so good it reduces it to zero. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to summon zoom. Actually, I need combat first. So summon zoom. Supercharge. Summon zoom. Supercharge. Summon zoom. So this would be the, the broken aspect of it right now. Uh, a, <laughs> there's no way you should be summoning three zooms or three allies of anything. Uh, most likely it's going to be changed to work like Dead King Scepter where it's just like a 10% reduction. So an ally is 120 second cooldown. So it would go from 120 seconds down to like 108 or whatever. That's that's what the Dead King does. So that would be that'd be something similar if it's going to be like a 10, 15% whatever reduction in cooldown. Not to zero. <laughs> Not a 100% reduction in cooldown, 
Um, and I'm sure that there should be an internal cooldown so you can't spam superchargers like I just did and have two of them out. So there's got to be some kind of, once it reduces it, there's an internal cooldown for another 30 seconds or something to last for the duration of a supercharge. So that will definitely get adjusted. But uh, that's obviously, even regardless, that's still the better of the procs. Because within the meta now with spamming Gemini, you're going to have a supercharge. You're going to be using your supercharge every, like, you know, 12 seconds if you're Berserk or, or Circuit Breaker, or 45 seconds for Neo, or 30 seconds for any other supercharge, or if you're running two supercharges. So, I mean, it still makes much more sense to have that than the pet damage one. I mean, if the pet damage one was, like, really good and it procced all the time, then it was, like, a mini source shard, then maybe. Uh, maybe that could be useful, but still the same. You're using your supercharge more often than you're using your pet. So, it makes sense to have your ally faster, especially in terms of it's going to do a lot of damage or... You know, some situations like that. So, so one out of two passives, I guess, isn't too bad for Aquaman. So, taking a look at our next passive, it's going to be Flashpoint Batman. I just want to show beforehand, my defense is 61,230. And I don't have Batman equipped. So, we're going to swap to his first ability here, because he's legendary, so he has two passives. So, Soul Detective, defense increases when you're solo. So now my defense is up to 63,066. So it was like a 2,000-ish increase. But it, it doesn't show up in the combat effects. It just, it's there. For what, it, I mean, it doesn't show up at all. Uh, and I'm assuming once your group it will drop. If you're in like solo content instance, it's fine. But say if I, if I unequipped it there, so same thing. So 63,066. And if I just swapped it uh, to another one. Drops down to 61, 230. So that's all that passive is. So for second one, gain health and heal based on your precision. So it's supposed to be when you act, uh, when you equip your weapon buff, you get increased health. That's how it was explained. So let, let's let's take a look here. So just to confirm, we've got the second combat combat stature suture. Health is 144,492. Weapon buff, 144,492. So it could be that I'm not in combat, so we'll try that again, even though the weapon buff is clearly applied. But we'll try doing uh, some precision attacks here. So obviously that was there. 144,492. Hasn't been impacted. I mean, I can see if I'm getting a heal at all. What are the odds? I'm on test server. How many people are in this phase? Three. There's three people in this phase, including me. And I have to run into a dude literally when I'm trying to test a passive. <laughs> like, what are the odds? There's two people on this entire phase, and he's right there at that time when I'm trying to kill an ad. So the same thing, well, I just equipped the weapon buff, we're mid-attack, 11444492. Uh, am I getting a heal at all? I still have the weapon buff applied for 20 seconds, you can still see that up in the corner. Doesn't help that these things are dying too quickly. Same thing, the weapon buff's applied, I'm not seeing any heal at all. Maybe we'll wait for these to take to my health a bit. Same thing, those guys can hit me too. So my health's low enough, I'm going to apply the weapon buff. Not getting any heal at all, that's just the passive recoveries from weapon. Yeah, there's no, no heal associated with it whatsoever. I'm not seeing anything I did incorrectly with that. Gain health and heal based on your precision. There was no healing. There was no health. We can try... Maybe we can try doing it in uh, actually instance content. Maybe it has to be like that. So we're going to go on duty. Solos. Doesn't really matter what we pick. I'll just do custom then. Science buyer, that's fine, that's the new one. Yep, 
Isn't it wonderful when things don't work as intended? I'm glad you responded because I need someone with your skill set. I've been trying to track down where Zod Of course, I had to pick the solo with like the long some intro. Of people took an interest in Lex Luthor's science fire. I knew then I needed to investigate. Yep. My guess is they're after something in Luthor's database. Let's find out. Same thing, weapon buff. I mean, it's applied. Same thing, 144,492, so that doesn't change anything. So we're actually going to wait for it to drop and then I'll reapply it. Actually, we can take some damage from these guys. So, it's applied. I mean, I'm attacking. Weapon buff is clearly up. And no health. No healing, no health increase. Just to confirm, weapon buff's up. I, mean, I still have taken damage. I mean, my precision is obviously there. 63k. Health doesn't change. So, don't know. I would chalk this up into the column that the passive is not working. Because I don't see... I don't see there's any other way you can apply that. Gain health and heal based on your precision. Well, I didn't gain any health and any heal in open world or instant content. And then the description on the form says you have activated your weapon buff, which makes sense because then it identifies you as precision. Whatever. So that's another one that doesn't seem to be working. Okay, so text testing our next uh, passive ally here, we got Queen Diana. Now the first one should work on a duo upon enemy weapon, or sorry, upon a pull, enemy weapons are debuff. Doesn't say enemy NPC, it says enemy, which would be should be counting a duel. If uh, just like the Rao testing the Rao debuffs, Amulet of Rao, same thing. You test that in a duel, and it will show you that. So we got that equipped, and I've got Tornado Pull on, so it is classified as a pull, even though I'm electric. So we'll duel the dummy account here. And we pulled it. And is there any kind of debuff on the enemy ad? I'm just swapping screens. That's why you can't see it. There is no anything in current debuffs or current effects. Is my precision gone down? Uh, nope. Weapon DPS still 68.33. Precision is 18.354. I can try pulling again. So that was another pull, it definitely worked on the pull. Weapon debuff, weapon DPS, don't know, still 6833, 18354 precision. So, the same thing, that that, that uh, passive isn't working. Unless it's classified as enemy NPCs. But if it was an enemy NPC, there's no way I could tell if the weapons were debuffed. You'd just be taking less damage, I guess? But same thing, there's like a huge damage range on NPC weapon attacks. So, I mean, this one may be a TBD requires further clarification. If they need, if they want to say enemy NPCs, it has to say enemy NPC, because then you know that it's not going to work on a player. But by, you know, precedent already in the game, it should have worked on a player. I should have seen a debuff, like an attack debuff, a precision debuff, weapon DPS debuff. That should have came up in my current effects tab. Once I pulled my, once I pulled it, and it is classified as a pull, tornado pull. So, as far as I can tell, this isn't working, or it's not working as they intend, possibly. Okay, for Queen Diana's second passive, we've got the upon breakout bonus might increases depending on the number of nearby group. So I do have a nearby member. That's you know. 10, 10, 15, 50 way. Uh, so might is 67.97 in clamp to metro. So these turrets are, are going to perma stun me no matter what. So I'll be definitely breaking out. Really? Really? What the turret is just going to. There we go. Now it's actually going to shoot me. 
but uh, 67.97. I broke out. 67.97. And I got a group member right there. That's not going to work. I can't be in the air. Broke out. 67.97. So I can maybe bring that tune right literally right beside me. Let's try this again. Broke out. 67.97. So I am 100% breaking out. Upon breakout... Bonus might increases depending on number of nearby group members. That is exactly what I'm doing. So I'm in a group. They're nearby. I'm breaking out. And no might is being applied. Is there anything like in the current effects or anything? Breakout. Literally it shows breakout. So, once again, I don't know how to show you this passive. Once again, from reading the description, it makes sense. Like, you, you would think every time you do breakout, if there's nearby group members, it just stacks and you get a higher uh, base might. Or bonus might. That makes sense. Except it doesn't seem to be working. You know, it seems great on, like, an earth tank tune, spamming jackhammer, stuff like that, or battle rolls. DPS won't be breaking it that much, but certainly tanks will. But, I mean, I'm, I'm breaking out each time, nothing's happening. So, once again, I'm not sure if this passive ability is just kind of chalked again. I wish I could uh, bring you guys more passive abilities that actually worked. But, I mean, once this works, then you, you'll, you'll know exactly what it does. So, it's, it's not hard to gather that. It's not like the Flash one where it's like, you don't even understand what it means. Then, at least, you know exactly what it means, it just doesn't work yet. Okay, to get to the introductory mission for the allies, uh, complete the uh, t video terminals. So the main four, you got the video terminal. It's going to send you all over the House of Legends, just speaking to different uh, DC Legends characters. Uh, so once you get to, eventually, you'll get to call allies, which would be speak to Cyborg and the House of Legends on the main observation deck. Can you believe this place? Allies from all across time and space. And I've been working out a system to connect everyone. I started the ball rolling on a basic team for you when something ominous arrived. A Batarang from the Dark Multiverse. With your name, a location under Crime Alley, and instructions to come alone. It's obviously a trap, so if you do choose to go... Once you finish speaking to him, be careful. you'll be able to travel to the Dark Multiverse Batcave. And then basically you're just completing the mission. Place gives me the creeps. It's like the Bat Cave. Has to be the Batman who laughs. This is gonna be a problem. You really walked right into my obvious trap all by yourself? This was almost too easy. <sighs>
because I need something from you, and you will need something from me. The hilarious thing is, you won't know what that is until it's too late. So, let's beat each other senseless. I'm your daddy. I'm going to enjoy this. Here, I've got your back. You got this. I'm here for the money. Where's the cake? Talk from someone who's going to the deepest, darkest dungeon. And hey, being able to send you allies? Pretty clutch. Okay, okay rather easy to complete that. Plus, there's health barrels everywhere, so A, you don't have to kill the, uh, the enemies, and B, there's health barrels if you really need that for survivability. And then go back to Cyborg. Now we can speak to Cyborg, and he gave us our first introductory ally, Oracle Bot. And then now you'll be able to equip him, so this is what the menu will look like when you have nothing. You'll have ally, and you can equip your first ally, and then continue from there. Now I can't, I'm assuming on live server, the rest of the vendor will have possibly the other allies. Most likely not, because they're going to drop in content. Uh, so that most likely this is where you're going to be purchasing your catalyst and possibly ally favor, but most likely just where your catalysts are going to be, and all the allies are going to drop off open world content. So that's the introductory mission. We'll get into the actual testing.